Hi, Bernard. What are we talking Hi. about in this video? So in this one, we are going to create the stretched cluster, right? Um, so that's different from the previous series we did. So the stretch cluster creation is different and we'll show you the differences. But before we talk about that, uh, you may wonder, or it's always to do, or it's always a good practice to do a cluster validation first, right? Um, Carsten has done this in in this uh, in this setup as well. However, we are not going to talk about this in detail. So we have ran the tests, we fixed some issues, but we don't talk about it. If you're interested in what the cluster validation is, uh, how it should look like, how it should be performed, get our voice uh, about it, then go to watch video number 13 on the other series, right? And then come back to this one um, where we continue on doing the cluster setup. But before we do that, there is one difference between a stretch cluster setup and a, well, not one difference. There are many differences, but um, you know, the one at this stage is with a regular cluster, you create, you have a one cluster IP address. In this setup, in this stretch cluster, you do have two management networks, one on each side, right? It's having a different IP address range and therefore we also need a different ip address which is valid on either on the first management network or on the other one right because whoever owns the cluster role right if it's a node on odd side or on the even side um, this ip address is um, made online right and we can't have a stretched ip address that works on both ends we need to have an individual one on either network so um long story short for a stretch cluster we need two management ip addresses okay and then i think Carsten, we switch over to your system where you create yes. the cluster using yes. powershell and here you have the cluster validation right um you exactly. did exactly it, it run already yeah mm -hmm. we have we have the warnings software update levels defender updates are not uh, equal and uh, something with the switch enabled teaming but this is also usual this error so uh, watch our other video series you there we talk in detail about warnings warnings won't hold us back right so we push yeah, exactly forward. we <laughs> have to look for the warnings if it's nothing that really matter yeah. we go on errors are another story so mm -hmm. um, we are now able to form a new cluster with the PowerShell command line new cluster. Um, we give it the nodes. We have a variable here with the four nodes. Mm -hmm. We have the cluster name here, uh, mm -hmm. to car cluster. And here's a speciality. We give it two cluster IPs. We talked mm -hmm. about that. We have different IP addresses in uh, both management networks and just let us just run this command mm -hmm. and cross our fingers. Mm -hmm. And maybe we have to speed this a little bit up. Mm -hmm. So while this is happening, um, maybe we talk a little bit about um, your domain structure, right? Um, because I recall that there is some documentation out uh, which says, and you may switch to my screen and I can show you this, where this is, because there isn't some, um, documentation on uh, stretch clustering and how you set it up with uh, uh, with PowerShell, for example, and here under the prerequisites. So before you begin, it tells you something about your Active Directory, which mm -hmm. requires you to set up two sites. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, you can do that. Um, and you know, if you have your nodes separated in the two sites, uh, that's good. However, it works also without doing it, right, Karsten? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Microsoft is uh, referring to the, we called it metro cluster or country cluster uh, setup, uh, so the London where you Paris. have different yeah. IP address spaces in the two sites, uh, also mm -hmm. for your uh, virtual machines. Um, in my scenario, we told you this is a very, very small campus cluster. The, the machines are not really in two different sites. We handle them then, then they are in two, uh, as if they are in two different sites, but uh, they are nearly together. And so my Active Directory is also 
in the same network. It's not in the in one of those two management networks we created for our cluster, but it's in another management network where our domain controllers live and they have uh, the same sub, they are in the same subnet. Um, uh -huh. And I implemented already multiple uh, Azure Stack HCI stretched clusters by the book, how we teach you that here. And I had never to, uh, to put sites in the Active Directory. Yeah, we either the cluster will recognize itself that it has two different management networks and will create uh, the nodes in different fault domains, so in, in different sites, or we will do that with PowerShell afterwards. But mm -hmm. to to uh, to decide what to do, we our cluster has to be formed, and then we can have a look. And, uh, okay. Yeah. So let's have a look at your PowerShell um, output. So in the ideal world, it would, you know, everything would be picked up by the setup or by the uh, failover cluster setup itself. Um, and it will detect that it is in the two sites. So let's see if that happens here as well. So now our cluster is created. Let's get okay. It. Get cluster. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're fine. We have to do one additional thing because we have a stretch cluster banner, right? Yes, yeah, so, um, but I think this is going to be in the next video where we do some housekeeping stuff, which is, you know, we look at the cluster from the failover cluster manager, for example, to see the networks, to maybe clean uh, uh, some things up and also create the witness. Um, but I think you are referring to the fault domains to tell the exactly. cluster in which yeah. site uh, the individual nodes are yeah okay. if we we let's just have a look if the cluster have created something on its own mm -hmm. yes um sometimes oh, it, it has okay and it already put yes uh so that's good uh that's i would say how it usually or normally it should look like right so the uh if you create a cluster with the separate networks um Sometimes it picks it up, um, or um, it picks it up. Um, it should know, pick it up. So if it, it doesn't, it you have to create them on your own. Mm -hmm. And we had prepared something in uh, the, the yeah. script we were doing. And here we mm -hmm. have uh, uh, two uh, new fault domains, level site, even and odd. And we, I think we will also do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. should we go with this? What do you think? Um, yeah, maybe we, yeah, let's, let's, let's create them, right? Um, because for, for the, for the people that are not fine where the stuff doesn't happen, um, then it's okay to do it manually and, uh, in order to, and then shift the, uh, the individual nodes around, right? I do that. So mm -hmm. we have here. Mm -hmm. So we create two new fault domains, new mm -hmm. cluster fault domain. Fault domain type is site in this example. Mm -hmm. So we have different rooms or different sites. Uh, mm -hmm. And we called our site even an odd, you remember maybe. Yep. And then we um, set the cluster fault domain of the different nodes to the even or odd side. So node one and three is uh, set to the odd side and two and four to the even side. And mm -hmm. If we do the get cluster fault domain again, mm -hmm. you see now we have still our two IP management IP address sites, but now we have an even side and an odd side. And mm -hmm. also our nodes are assigned to one of those sites. Uh, I think this, this is a bit clearer than the IP addresses, but, uh, but it would work with the IP addresses. Right, and it's an important step to be done at this stage of the cluster, right? So remember, we don't have the storage added yet to the cluster. Um, yes. And that's important because the, how the, the way how the storage will be, you know, put into the cluster is different if there is an existing site structure or not, right? Exactly. Um, so and um, yeah, I think that was an easy step. Um, if you want to learn more about the different fault domains, um, how, what is possible there, then there is uh, documentation on, out on the internet regarding this, right? But for our 
uh, stretched cluster, uh, we use the domain fault domain type site, right? Okay. Not rack or uh, chassis, for example. Right? See you in the next video, I would say. Yes.